dance with me here in a moment if he doesn't get up. How many of you read the sermon title this morning? Did you start to sing? Did you? Did you start to sing when you read it? Right? Right? What's love got to do? Got to do with it? What's love but a second hand emotion? Right. What's love got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? What is it? What does love have to do with it? I think it has everything to do with it. If you listen this morning as the gospel lesson was read to you, there's a great what is called a chiism. That's the big word for the day. Chiism. C H I S M. Means that it's a bracket on things. We have an, what, what would be learned in English or math as an A B B A setup here, right? Jesus says in the beginning, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then at the very end, in verse 21, he says, the one having my commandments and keeping them is the one who loves me. So it starts with love and keep, and it ends with keep and love. But it's bracketed by love, if, not if, love. We'll get to if in just a minute. Our whole text is bracketed by Jesus loving and keeping the commandments, telling the disciples, right? This is a continuation of last week's discussion, right? There's no break in the action here. Even though we've missed a whole week, we've gone seven days, we still, this is a continuation, right? In my Father's house there are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you. How do we know how to get there? And then Jesus said, if you love me and keep my commandments. There's no break. It's all one continuous line of thought. Right? So Jesus is talking to them, telling them that he's gone to prepare a place, that they're going to get to rest in God, and you get to do this if. Right? It's conditional. Verse 15 is a conditional statement. Right? But how we read this conditional statement depends on which variance of the reading we choose. That's right. There's multiple ways we can read verse 15. If you love me and keep my commandments, then I will go to the Father and ask Him anything that you ask of me. That's one. Another one is, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments, and I will go and ask the Father anything you ask. Right? If you love me and, if you love me and, is the first one, if you love me then, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask. The third one, by the way, that second one there is the one that we heard this morning in our readings. If you love me, then you will keep my commandments, and I will go to the Father and ask him anything that you, da, da, da. That was our reading from this morning. The third one is this, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father anything that you ask of me, then I will give you the paraclete. And no, that's not an exotic bird, and it's not something you wear during baseball or soccer or football. The paraclete is the advocate, the Holy Spirit, right? So what is it? Is it, if you love me and keep my commandments, then I will ask the Father? Or is it, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, or is it the last one, which is the, all the beginning, and then I'll give you the Holy Spirit. Which one is it? And does it make a difference? Are you awake? I don't know if it does or not. We'll get to that in a moment. But again, what does love have to do with it? Right? Here in our reading, love is a present subjunctive implying a continuing act of loving Jesus. It's a subjunctive. We're going to learn constantly here. English is a beautiful language. And it's beautiful in the fact that it means so many different things when you read it in the grammatically correct way. Which means the love here is something that we are supposed to keep on doing. If we keep on loving Jesus, if we continue to love Jesus, he's not asking if we love him. It's more of a sense. Since we love Him, we need to keep on loving Him. And the word here in the Greek is agape. Right? Quick Greek lesson. Greek has how many words for love? Anybody know? I'm hearing it. Three. 
There are three Greek words for love. Our, our word here in, the, in our lesson today is agape. There's two other words. There's phylos and there's eros. Eros is erotic love. It's hardly ever found in the New Testament. Phylos. I said hardly, right? Philos. For those of you who know the city Philadelphia, Philadelphia is a Greek word. It's philodelphia, which is love of brother. That's why it's called the city of brotherly love. It's philodelphoi, which is love and brother, right? It's two Greek words put together. Philos is like a brotherly love. That's what it is. It's like a companion type love. And agape, agape is what God has for you. It's unconditional love. It implies more than having warm feelings towards someone or something else. This type of love emphasizes showing one's love or demonstrating one's love. This can be without an inner warm fuzzy feeling. Right? For example, Loving one's enemies doesn't mean to develop warm feelings for them and to feel nice about them. It means to do what is beneficial for them regardless of how we actually feel about them. Right? Jesus never told us that we have to like our enemies. He said we have to love them and do what is beneficial for them. That doesn't mean that we necessarily agree with what they're doing or how they're acting. But we are doing what is most beneficial for them in the kingdom of God. That is agape. So how does Jesus show love? Or how do we, better yet, how do we show our love for Jesus? According to Jesus in today's reading, it's by keeping His commandments. Did you catch that little S on the end of that word there? It's plural, right? When you think of Jesus' commandments, what do you think of? Right? What is the Jesus' commandment? Which is the greatest commandment, Jesus says? To love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like it. To love our neighbor as ourself. Actually, I would say that that's one. Loving God and our neighbor is all one. Right? Jesus' commandment. His commandment singular is that we are to love one another. That's in chapter 13. It's also again in chapter 15. But what are the Father's commandments that Jesus keeps? If we're supposed to model our lives after Jesus and understand who we are in Him, then what do we look at and how He does it? And what commandments He keeps? Four times in the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking about commandments or what God commands. In chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus, it's in reference to Jesus' power to lay down His life and to, His power to take it up again. Does this imply that the Father's commandment is that Jesus has freedom of choice in the matter of whether he lives or whether he dies. It's God's commandment that he has the power to do that. In ver- chapter 12, verse 41, Jesus, what Jesus does comes from the Father's command. He only does what God tells him to do. Later on in chapter 12, again, Jesus says that he only says what the Father tells him to say. All of his words come from God. Everything he does comes from God. Everything he says comes from God. And then the next verse in chapter 12, all of this is chapter 12. Chapter 12, verses 41, 49, and 50. The Father's commandment, singular, is eternal life related to Jesus speaking just as the Father has told him. Right In the Gospel of John, when the, when the writer talks about Jesus' commandments and what God has commanded Jesus to do, it needs to be noted that the keeping of the commandments is not the same as obedience to the Torah. Say that again. Being obedient to God's commandments in the Gospel of John is not the same as keeping the law. Jesus is asked in chapter 8, verse 5, Now in the law of Moses, it's commanded us to stone a woman who's caught in the act of adultery. What do you say? And Jesus said, Let the one amongst you who is without sin cast the first stone. So here's the twist to that story that we've never thought about that we're not going to go far into this morning. Who could have thrown a stone but didn't? Because it's not what the Father would have wanted him to do. 
Since the Father's commandments, which Jesus kept, involved what He said and did, then I believe that Jesus' commandments to us refers to all that He did and all that He said. Meaning that everything that we do and everything that we should say should be what God the Father tells us to do and God the Father tells us to say. Now that's easier said than done. I will be the first to admit that and give up many examples where I should have done something different than I did in my life. Right? We can't just pick what we want Jesus' Jesus's commandments to be. We can't just pick one or two verses and conclude that that's what Jesus' commandments are. What Jesus expects from us is revealed to us by what Jesus did and how Jesus lived. So then if we're going to that level and understanding what it means to keep what Jesus did, what does it mean to keep? Because Jesus says in here, if you love me and keep my commandments, right? How many people we have here? I could ask you all to define the word keep for me real quick and I'd get that many different definitions, right? What does it mean to keep? In the lexicon that I look in sometimes, for the definition of words. The definition for the word tero, which is the Greek word for keep, is to retain in custody, to keep watch over, to guard, to cause a state, condition, or activity to continue, to keep, to hold, to reserve, to preserve, for a definite purpose or suitable time, to keep unharmed or undisturbed, of holding on to something so as not to give it up or lose it, or being protective of, or to persist in obedience, to keep, observe, fulfill, pay attention to. Notice, none of those definitions is obey. Obey is not one of the words that can be used as a translation for the Greek word for keep here in our reading this morning. The English words that might be used in this translation are not anything close to that. While to persist in obedience is a definition that could be used, it's more to keep, to observe, to fulfill, to pay attention to. A definition that I think we could use for this word, for tarot, the word Greek word for keep, is to hold dear, or maybe consider important. As it is used in this phrase, keeping the commandments, I don't think that Jesus or John, the writer here, implies just blind obedience to what Jesus said and did. We are to consider those deeds and words as extremely important and holding dear to that tradition that has been handed down to us, keeping alive all of the memory of what Jesus said and did in his life and carrying on that ministry and keeping it moving forward. It's like the idea of a keepsake. How many of you have something from a loved one. There's something in my pocket right now that I carry with me everywhere I go that reminds me of somebody. It's something that we have been given that we hold dear to, want to display and use so that others can know that it's dear to us. And this interpretation goes beyond mere obedience. People may detest the rules that they're forced to obey. People may hate those who give and enforce the rules, and since they fear the punishment, they may comply. Right? Those of you in teachers or administration, you understand that, right? People follow the rules because they don't want to get in trouble. Right? It's not because they like the rules. It's not because they necessarily want to follow the rules. It's because they know if they don't, something's going to happen. For example, it's interesting, I talk about teachers and I'm going to talk about prisoners. Students, you're not prisoners. It's not the same. Prisoners may keep the rules but hate them and the guards who enforce them. I don't believe this is what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about keeping the commandments. It's not about keeping the rules or the the things in our lives because we're going to have to be punished if we don't. That's not what it's about. I also don't think that the word for keep necessarily implies blind obedience to anything that we're asked to do. I believe that the word suggests having a positive attitude towards the commandment that they are important to me because God, the one from from whom they came, they are important to Him. And that is why they're important to me. And that is why I want to follow these commandments because not only do they give me life, but they show others around me that it's important for me to do this. Not because of what I get, 
but because of what they can have in the life that they could live knowing that I'm following this, that they too could follow this. So what's love got to do with it? As Lutherans, we talk a lot about works righteousness and doing things to get what we want or doing things to get into heaven. Right? It's not about that at all. We all know that we can't work our way to heaven. It's not about that. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ. None of us can do anything that would obtain that portion for us. It's interesting, though, that a Jewish commentator argued that works righteousness is something that doesn't exist in Judaism either. Those who follow the law in order to obtain their salvation are not doing that. Works righteousness has no place among the covenant people of, Ju- of Jerusalem. They are God's people because God said so, not because of what they do. And their obedience to the Torah isn't about becoming God's people, it's about being a witness to the rest of the world that they are God's people. I think that when we consider keeping Jesus' commandments as our witness to the world, that we are His disciples, and it takes the work, works righteousness aspect out of the equation We are God's people, declared that by God. We are righteous through Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace through faith, not of our own works, but because of what Jesus has done for us. That is what makes us righteous. And now we should live like it so that the world will know that we are Jesus' disciples. And we should want them to know the truth about us and about God and about everything that happens in our lives because of who He is and how He interacts with us. So what does love have to do with it? Everything. Because we follow the commandments not to earn His love, but to show the world His love. And by this, they will know that we are Christians. And how is it they'll know we are Christians? They'll know we are Christians by our love. Because love is not a second-hand emotion. Love is a way that we are called to live and have to live through what Jesus has done for us is the example that He's given us to go out into the world and love them unconditionally because that is what God has first done for us.